Uh, Let me ask you, if you were doing that, if you're, if you're laying the card out, if you're going to close with Osprey Danielson, do you open with Joe and Strickland? No, I open with a ladder match. Okay. Wow. How about that? But your idea is not bad. I don't know. I'm not mad at you. I'm not going <laughs> to send out angry tweets. <laughs> uh, seriously. I, I just think that, uh, uh, I, I, I believe it's going to be a hell of a show. Yes. I, I think the ladder match will, will be awesome. And I have no idea the order of the matches, which is fine with me. Sure. Sure. People think I need more information than I, I normally talk about. And when you've been doing this as long as I have Conrad, the, the fundamentals and the basics don't change. They don't change. You prepare for the match. You understand you get some little bullet points. I appreciate Alex Marvez for uh, helping out on that. He's always, always done a, uh, a great job and his notes are very usable. So, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that, uh, he's on the team quite frankly. And Alex is getting a little bit more TV time. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Look at him. So, uh, and I'm, and I'm happy for him. Uh, Marvez reminds me of the late Howard Finkel is that he loves pro wrestling. Maybe I could say it just lead to another story, I guess, but, uh, nobody loved wrestling more than Howard, but in that conversation is certainly, uh, Alex Marvez. He loves it. He spends a lot of hours working on it. So uh, I'm glad he's getting some TV time. We all like that. And, uh, Anyway, he's, he's, he does a great job. So I'll, I'll, I'll study my notes of the matches that I get. I'll know the matches I'm going to call earlier in the day. The notes will be ready earlier in the day. So then it's just a matter of finding yourself a quiet spot and reading and uh, highlighting things that you certainly want to get in. So nothing changes, which is good. You, but the anticipation bills uh, based on the match and what you perceive the match quality is going to be. I can't perceive anything but greatness out of Osprey and Brian Danielson, but I think I would open with a ladder match. It's a, cause it's going to be hard to follow. So you give it a little bit of distance. Uh, yeah. I mean, I would have the last two matches would be, uh, Joe Strickland, which has really turned into a great story and, uh, physicality. I like the physicality. Uh, the intensity has been amazing. Both guys have got great facial expressions. Uh, they're going to work their ass. I'll try to steal the show, which I love. And, uh, but I would, I would start off with a ladder match and then somewhere in the middle there, come back with, uh, a show, maybe the, maybe the next, the last match. I just don't think anybody from a call from a product standpoint, Conrad, is going to have a lot of success topping what we will see. I think from, uh, Brian and, uh, and will, will Osprey. Well, I, if, that is, if that is his real name, I love you for that. I'm excited about this weekend's pay-per-view and listen, I know that the buzzword these days is tribalism, but no matter where you are, if you're a wrestling fan, you're going to enjoy the AEW pay-per-view for whatever reason, it feels like AEW always delivers on pay-per-view. I'm sure this will be no exception. This card looks strong as hell. We've got Okada taking on Pac. That's a dream match for a lot of folks. We've got Roger. How, 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 how good can that be coming? Right. right? I mean, That's really? a sleeper. That could steal the whole show. It sure could. It sure could. Cause both guys uh, are big match players and Pac has been waiting a long time, seemingly because of these issues or injuries, whatever it may be, uh, to get his shot at the, the spotlight on him. I think it'll be a hell of a match. I'm with you. Totally agree. Roderick Strong is going to be defending the international championship against Kyle O'Reilly. Of course, everybody who uh, has been watching wrestling for the last several years is very familiar with their backstory and house of black will be in there against Adam Copeland, Eddie Kingston, and Mark Briscoe, who is the new ring of honor world champion. I really and like uh, house of black. I, I, I've been a fan of their work. Uh, all three of them are underrated. All three of them could be stars in single competition. If that was the direction chosen. Yes. So I, I like the house of black <clears throat> and, uh, it's hard to think that Copeland Kingston and Briscoe, uh, won't gel like a, a well-oiled machine, all, all good workers. And they all know what they're doing. 
We've also got uh, Julia Hart defending her TBS title against Willow Nightingale and uh, Tony Storm and Thunder Rosa are going to hook it up for the women's title. But the two matches that uh, I maybe most... By the way, Conrad, I want to say Thunder Rosa's promo, that live promo she did last week... Yes, sir. ...was her best work. Okay. She was intense. Uh, She captured her thoughts very expertly. And uh, she's another one that's been waiting for opportunity to arise. And it's here. It's Sunday. Samoa Joe and Swerve hooking it up for the AEW title. We know for sure that we're also going to see Brian Danielson and Will Ospreay. We all sort of assume that's the main event. A lot of people are calling that a match of the year candidate before they've even put the ring up. But the match that I want to talk about right quick is the Young Bucks and FTR in a ladder match. You suggested perhaps that should open the show. Well, well the audience, uh, the, the audience, Conrad is fresh. Yes. They're, they're not wore out. They haven't, you know, uh, gone too crazy with their chance and all these things. They're, they're a fresh piece of business. And, uh, uh I just think that, that it would be very hard to follow. Uh, and I, that to me, that would be an idea. Is it the only idea? Of course not. Right. Like, like you said, you know, maybe Joe and Strickland open the show. I have a problem with that simply because it's for the main title. So maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm too old school and get the fuck out of my yard. I love you for that. <laughs> I, I wanted to ask you about the uh, young bucks FTR thing, because of course the internet was a buzz for the last 10 days or so about the announcement that Tony Khan was going to show the all in from London footage. And we actually saw it last week and it became a part of this FTR young buck storyline. And everybody and their brother has had a chance to chime in and throw their two cents, except you, Jim, what'd you think of Tony's decision to air the footage? What'd you think of the execution of making it into a storyline? And do you expect to see this be a way to introduce Jack Perry back into the fold or what do you make of all this? Well, I make the fact that, uh, the value of showing that footage to me was the fact that you got on with your storytelling to further marry. FTR and, uh, bucks. So to me, when they, when that was the direction that was chosen, uh, I was much more comfortable showing that footage. Other than that, I'm not sure what it, what, what it meant. I'm not sure why we did it other, other than, uh, the fact that it, it helped tie together a very crucial and important pay-per-view match. So that's my thoughts on that deal. Uh, uh, and, and as far as Jack Perry is concerned, you know, I've been a Jack Perry fan for uh, since day one. I, I remember, uh, being somewhat resistant on calling him jungle boy. As I told him, I said, you know, I'm not going to rely on the jungle boy moniker, uh, as much as you, it has been in the past, because you're not going to be a boy forever. And Jack Perry is a manly, you know, manly name and all that stuff. I, I, I never had a crossword with this kid. He's always been very polite. I've got to know his mother and his sister. Uh, they're just wonderful people, but you know, we all can make mistakes and, and he's young and, and can be somewhat impetuous, but that's just goes for the youth. Uh, hell, some of us old guys are young, are young thinking and impetuous, but I hope that, uh, they get everything worked out with Jack and wouldn't Sunday be an interesting time for him to return. Well, I got my fingers crossed. I'm looking forward to it. And I'm sure that people are going to be breaking down and discussing every little bit of what happens this Sunday. I'm sure we'll touch on it next week as well, but 